Hello guys, welcome to my version of Ask Octopus. We have changed up the format ever so slightly where we're going to be running individual videos which will be shared um, slightly differently. But this is something that we're trying out and it may be something that will change in the future. Feedback is welcome. And in today's um, session, uh, I've got Bob. Hello. And myself. Uh, and today what I'm going to be addressing is how do I change from a standalone setup to a high availability setup? Mm. This is something I get asked, and more so recently, um, as Octopus is becoming more and more uh, critical, what I'm finding is, is, is more people are going to high availability. Are you getting a lot of those questions from your customers, Bob? Yeah, I am, uh, because they don't want to have a single point of failure in their in deployment pipeline. It makes perfect sense to have high availability set up, but then the questions that I'm getting are, do I have to uninstall Octopus and reinstall Octopus on another set of servers? Uh, what kind of strategies do you recommend? So yeah, it's a lot of the same questions. So this will be good to kind of dive into. Yeah, I get that a lot. And, and a lot of people as well start thinking about like you have to migrate it away from the standalone to mm -hmm. you know, uh, over to HA as well. Um, and what I'm going to be doing today is, 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 is just starting. Uh, we can talk about it uh, from a high level initially, uh, mm -hmm. and then I'll jump in. I'm actually going to take you through uh, setting it up as well. Um, so what I've got today is I have, as you can see here, I have Octo One. Yep. Um, and this is in my, my home environment. So um, as you can see here, I've got my octo1.home.local. I'm very original in my naming conventions, as you can see. Um, and we can see here, just from here, if you come into, this is where you would check, uh, check uh, how many nodes are actually in your, H, in your setup. And, and almost all, it will just be the one. And yep. this is here, this is octo1. So, what um what I often recommend um to to just in general is uh, if we're possible um is stick it behind a load balancer. I'm a big fan, Bob of um, sticking everything behind a load balancer. <laughs> and even if it's um even if it's uh, even if it's you know only a single point of failure, the, the yeah. reason is is um with that is you can generally add in like things like uh, maintenance, uh, you know, like a little maintenance page that just, you know, instead of people obviously coming in and thinking it's down, you can just obviously with a, you know, it's a nice way to set it. And it gives you some additional controls like, you know, like SSL offloading and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and what it also does is it means that you can scale things um, a lot easier, um, quite elastically. Um, mm -hmm. So there, yeah, and what I would do here is, is when you're setting up, uh, when you're thinking about setting it up, um, what again another way is similar to the load balancer is actually thinking about SQL um, if more quite often the customers are running it in a SQL uh, standalone um, where possible I would definitely recommend even um, you know if you're thinking about uh, standalone versus high availability you know SQL clustering um, you know, where you can make it highly available, then definitely make it highly available. So before you think about this, I would, where possible, I'd start thinking about putting it your Octopus server behind a load balancer, um, mm -hmm. and then obviously making sure it's on a SQL uh, cluster. Um, that is, to this, 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 uh, the actual last thing I'd normally do in this process is actually is make it high availability. Um, that is almost the very, very last thing. Um, if you have that stack in place, um, You've already got, you know, you want SQL high availability anyway, um, but it just generally makes things easier to, to, to manage and maintain. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump in um, and take you through setting up your second node. Okay. What, so, about, uh, what about your file share? Should you make that use some sort of technology like DFS or if you're yes. on, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, that was out. That's, um, you should, where possible, again, same idea. Uh, store your task logs, uh, your and artifacts, and a network share. Um, again, what that does is, is what happens is, if, if you think about it, is uh, with that is, if if your Octopus server is destroyed, and hopefully it's never, and you, know, you can restore it from backup with your network share in place, similar to the SQL cluster and high availability, you've got a bit more resilience. And, and often with DFS, you'll have multiple copies of that. So yeah. You're absolutely right there. Um, and that's actually, I'm going to actually um, take you through what you should do um, from the, the, the network um, storage. Oh. So everything at the moment is local on this, 
what sorry that's not entirely true I've done a bit of a Blue Peter moment for our, for our UK <laughs> customers um, where I've already moved um, the artifacts, packages, and task logs. Um, I've already moved those onto my NAS, um, my home NAS. So from here, um, you can see I've already moved through some of my community action templates and it's a whole bunch of stuff here. Yeah. Um, as you can see, packages, different spaces, uh, mm -hmm. have different uh, locations, and my task logs. Okay, so at the moment, though, it is running and it is actually only looking locally just now. So I'm going to assume that I've already moved these over. So when you're doing this, you should probably take it. You're probably going to have to take an outage when you're setting all this up. So people aren't trying to do deployments or anything like that. You should set it probably either shut down this or uh, probably put it in the drain, the, in drain everything and put it in a maintenance mode. Definitely, definitely. What, um, you're absolutely right there. Uh, Put that into maintenance, and to be honest, it's actually really, uh, really, really fast as well. Because obviously, copying over things on yeah. our local network share, you know, for the most part, you know, generally ten to ten minutes to a half an hour. So there is a little bit of prep involved. Um, and so, for the so you have yeah. six hundred gigs of packages. <laughs> well, that's that's true, but then they should yeah. probably look at retention policies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what you've got here is I've got my octo uh, one dot home dot local. Mm -hmm. And what I've also got is I've already created a, a load balance URL. Um, I don't have a fancy load balance in the house. I'm just using HA proxy for this. Um, so as you can see here is Octopus Server Manager. Uh, this is an Octo2, but I'm not going to jump into that just yet. Just wanted to show that I have installed it because I didn't want people sitting through me, you know, clicking next, next, next. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move... My packages. Um, command, if you drop into uh, command line, uh, and I'm just, here we go. Oh. Derek, can't copy and paste. Oh. One moment. So, what you'll have to do here is change to your Octopus Deploy uh, location and program files. Okay. And this, okay. I think I may just. Copy I'm just going to go old school and go. Um, <laughs> yes, it's, so first things first, move what your artifacts. That, what don't you want to do? Configure. Ooh, one moment. I don't, this is a bit of a fail, unfortunately, because I'm running it on a Mac and then. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, hmm, wait, okay. There we go. There we go. Oh, it is path. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, and then let's see if I can do this for a second time and make sure that I'm a professional copy and paste. Off. As you see, at the end of this, after each one of my commands that I'm going to put in, um, you are going to have to restart the server. And then here you go. Oh, that's artifacts. That's also, don't forget to change the command as well because yeah. it's dash dash artifacts. Yeah, this, this is a bit of a demo fail, unfortunately. <laughs> That's all right. I'm just going to put it here. Let's just, uh, uh, ah. There we go. And that is going to go through the same process. And it is done, I Yeah. Yes. So. Apologies for that. So, the, what I am, um, as I said, it's like the, the main thing here is, is to make sure. Um, that you you really you can you can do some prep with a load balancer and this is obviously this is one of the final uh, steps the actual process is really straightforward and what we've got here is is we've got all everything moved over um mm -hmm. as you can see and what i normally do here is just do a quick restart and the good thing here is is this is this isn't something you have to do to each node and um, yep. what's going to happen here is 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 with this is 
it's stored in the database. So once you act, that that's the reason for adding um, that the second or your third or fourth node at the at the very end of the of that is that you don't then have to go through all that um, all that pain at the end. Yeah, yeah. It's, this is just a one. It's, you just have to move the folders a one time and change the configuration a one time. It, yeah, adding the difference between adding two nodes and three nodes and four nodes. That second node takes the longest, and then three, four, five, like you're saying, takes like seconds. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And it, you can actually, you know, and, and that's the thing, Bob. You know, do um, you get a lot of customers who scale up and down during the day based on performance, or you know, as the as the users, as more people are using it? Not very, not particularly. Um, most of the, most of the customers I tend to talk to are running on premise, so they're just they just have their VMs set and they're just always running. Um, I imagine if you're going to more of a cloud uh, solution, it would make a lot more sense where you would want to scale up and down your VMs at that particular point to to avoid cost. Well, that's it. This is the this is the, the the best part. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, go through the information. And the main thing here is just to as you open up Octavus Manager, is um, make sure you just add this instance to a high availability cluster. If you hit get started. Um, you're not going to be able. That's that will be a new instance of Octopus, mm -hmm. not a, a, a high availability cluster. So as you can see here, we're going through the normal process. We're going to use a custom account. I always use them. Um, service Octopus. Always use a service account. Oh, you set up your own AD. Yeah, I'm mean, a. Remember, I'm a. Um, I'm obviously you know obviously it's a admin by you know by trade. Um, yeah. I've got yeah I've got more, I've got Active Directory. People get low, um people get a welcome to Derek's home uh, later when you know when, whenever I have any guests over, uh, <laughs> they get access. Uh, they, they don't even get access to my internal Wi-Fi uh, that they got put on my DMG Wi-Fi. But that's um, a fun fact or a little bit you know over the oh, top. I have, my, I have my networks completely segregated. For, like all the Octopus work, it goes onto a different. It even has a different internet connection. So. That's you just showing off now, Bob. That's you just showing <laughs> off. Um, but yeah, so as we see here, we've done the authentication. What we're going to do here is I have a server called SQL, um, very, very original. Windows authentication, you, you, you configure this um, so that um, that user does have access to the database. Yep. And then as you can see here, I've got a nice clean database. I've just got Octo and Octo HE. This one is Octo HE. Select next. One second, of course, I, the good thing here is, is uh, yeah, the master key. If you ever, as part of this, um, you can view, copy to clipboard. There we go. And this is where, hey, I can copy and paste. <laughs> and, and then you configure your bindings, install. And then that's you. One, the, a few items um, that you do have to do is configure uh, URLs. So you need to, um, just at the end of this process, um, I would normally add in your load balance URL. I am a bit um, old school in that I also like to be able to see uh, directly direct onto the server. Mm -hmm. um, so whilst this is going through, we're almost done. I just love how quick this is. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, everything's already configured. All it has to do is just, <laughs> I see to connect all I need to do is connect over to this database and pull in some configuration and I'm good to go. That's it. That's it. I always, first thing here I always do is remove the local host binding. Um, ah. Not a big fan of that. Um, it's a bit of a security risk I generally find. Um, we've got octo2.home.local. And then that is your direct URL. Um, so if you ever find that you're having an issue, it gives you that um, ability to just go, you, uh, go direct. And then octopus.home.local. So and the load balancer, it. that's really only needed though for web traffic. You could, yeah. you could in theory add a bunch of HA nodes and all those HA nodes, they would handle all your different deployments, but you could still have just one server dedicated just for like web traffic and all that other yeah. stuff. That's yeah, well, that's it. Um, you can actually, you can have it so that uh, exactly you see, I, I've not saw that uh, configured a lot um, from the customer side of things, but it's definitely a, a use case for it. Yeah, um, I saw a customer. They had they had a four they had a four node set up. Three of the nodes handled all deployments, and then the fourth node that was for all the web interface work, and they had that node set to drain 
So it never picked up any new tasks and it was never became a leader. Wow, that's a really, that's a, that's a really nice set up actually, I like that. Yeah, and then, I mean, once, if they had, they could also add just another one into that, into that make a trade node as well, then they could have a load balanced uh, web interface as well. Excellent. Oh, yeah, actually I was like, that's actually a really good idea. Cause I mean, then, it, then you could have service debt, you know, with specific tasks. Yeah, yeah, that's a really, that's a really nice use case. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, um, either. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting you get that where you know yeah. you see customers and they're like they're like how did you think of that um you know like multi like multi tenancy is one uh, that comes up quite a lot anyway um what what we've got here is we're back to octo one didn't even have to refresh the page came back in we've got octo one and we've got octo two we've got a leader we've got a follower nice. and what I'm going to do now is just to prove that hopefully my word but yeah we go HA proxy works um, <laughs> you can sign in. Same idea, exact same one, configuration, nodes, octo one, octo two. For the most part, that's it. That is, um, there is, um, th there's only one I more item that, I, uh, if you're using uh, polling tentacles, there's some additional items that will post in there, but yeah, you can just have to make sure that you add the second uh, node so that the tentacles can trust it. Yeah, because with polling tentacles, it needs to, because the work could be done on any node, it needs to be able to point to both nodes. Basically, go. Are you? Do you have work for me to do? Nope. All right. Do you have work for me to do? Nope. Okay. That's it. That's it. And it's really straightforward. You just add it in. Uh, you can just add it straight into your tentacle.config. Um, really straightforward. Um, but that's it for my session on high availability. Um, yes. Yeah, I think so. Um, so Bob, I'd just like to say thanks for joining me today. Um, Thank you. Excellent. And guys, if you have any questions about this, please do get in touch. Uh, if you want to submit a, a, a question, um, you can submit it on, you can jump on Slack. Uh, you can email us at support at octopus.com or uh, submit it on hello.octopus.com forward slash ask octopus. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Yeah, thank you.